planner with Downey Planning and Architecture. I'm just going to give you a brief talk today about uh, planning past, present and future trends. Um, I'll be t talking a little bit about what is planning and development, global and national trends, the planning system past and present. Future insights of planning in terms of some of the legislation that has been brought forward in terms of trying to kickstart the house building and, and uh, tackle the homelessness problem. And then we'll be talking about development standards and are, are they a barrier towards sustainability. So what is the purpose of planning? Aside from you know, your architect's drawings, your, your planning application, planning and the, ide the ideology behind planning is about creating sustainable communities. Now, a sustainable community is something where people of all demographics, of all walks of life, they want to live, work, shop, go to school, be entertained and relax in. They have to be places that feel safe, connected, attractive and economically viable and lively. And we've failed in the past in, in trying to produce these. We've, we've all seen what the, the effects of uh, sprawl has been on uh, the, the greater Dublin area. In terms of population, by the year 2050, it's expected that the world's population will have grown to almost 9 billion people. Two thirds of those people will live in cities. So we have to develop cities at a sustainable pace and in a sustainable way. In Ireland, our population is expected to be beyond six million by 2050. And the pressure on the GDA is where it's going to happen. That's, this is where the, 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 the recovery is happening. This is where the jobs are happening. This is where there's a, a, a need for homeless, uh, homes to be built. We also have an aging population. And in the past, you know, there's been an argument to say that um, there are enough houses. There just aren't enough houses for sale. And you know, when we look at our aging population, we know that there's you know, many aged people who are living in three and four bedroom houses. And in order for them to downsize, because of the way we built mono-style estates, they would have to move out of their location and re-establish um, uh, uh, themselves in another area, completely away from all their friends and their, their, their social scene. This is what we've built in the past. You know, it has been car reliant. Um, it's caused sprawl. You know, people end up spending two, three, four hours a day traveling to and from their, their place of employment. We need to move towards something more on, on the European scale, where places are walkable. Everything is within, you know, 10, 15 minutes walk, whether that's your, your job, your entertainment, your, your, your social activity. In the past, in 2007, we had built 90,000 dwelling units, 86,835 planning applications, and in, the, in terms of planning resources across the local authorities, there were 607 planners working for local authorities. Construction was valued at 38 billion, which was 24% of gross national product, and it employed 282,000 workers. Now, planning has come in for some bashing as well over the last while in terms of, you know, planners are often accused of being anti-development. But if you work as a private planning consultant, you have to be pro-development or you're out of a job. And this is what happens when construction stops and development stops. You can see the amount of planning applications uh, plummeted after the, the crash, with the result that many people who were working in the industry uh, either left and went abroad or left the industry altogether. And even in terms of, of uh, you know, people joining uh, planning classes, that has now dwindled as well to the point that we could be facing shortages in the future. And I know across uh, the IPI are, are active in terms of global networks, and there are significant shortage of planners in New Zealand, Canada, Australia, and the UK. Okay. So fast forward to the present. In 2014, there were only 11,000 dwelling units constructed. There was only 21,000 planning applications, and you can see the numbers of planners have been reduced in the local authorities. The construction uh, value has, has dwindled, and the employment has almost halved, with the result that the natural requirement is about 25,000 units a year, and that's what we need to get up to to build in, in terms of trying to address the, the housing needs. Therefore, sustainable natural is 25,000, which is 10%. We're still at very low levels of planning applications, and there's a time lag or a time bomb effect of planning. 
this will give you an idea of what the holdup can be in terms of trying to uh, bring houses to the to the market and in terms of supply. So you can see from vision and concept, the sketch proposals are probably three or four weeks. Detailed design planning work another four or eight, eight weeks. Lodgement of application to council is the eight-week statutory uh, period. You then have a, an additional six months where there could be requests for additional information. And then a final council decision takes four weeks. That then can then go to the planning appeal for four weeks and then on board Planola has 18 weeks for a decision. So, you know, we're looking at well over a year from the time that the, the, the idea came to fruition. With the result that we now have a crisis in rental accommodation and with rents spiraling and a lack of supply, <coughs> there needs to be action and there needs to be action very, very quickly. Can we rebuild Ireland sustainably? Is it possible under the current planning system? And you know, again, the planning system will be key. There's been a number of uh, legislation and uh, ideas brought forward in terms of Construction 2020, the Planning Bills 1 and 2, and the Urban Regeneration and Housing Bill, plus the Lobbying Bill. These are all designed to try and kickstart the, uh, the house building with, uh, and, and incentivize developers to begin building. You have your Construction 2020, that had 75 recommendations, probably too many. Planning bill number one was designed around the part five, the social and affordable housing. Now up until the, the crash in 2007, there was a 20% requirement for developers to uh, supply social housing and affordable housing. But unfortunately, once the private development stopped, the supply of social housing also stopped. The, They've now changed the part five to 10% and it's for just social housing. The affordability housing has been dropped from the, uh, from the legislation. There is also an introduction of a vacant site lab levy, and this is to try and stop people hoarding land banks and to, you know, waiting for um, the, the price to, 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 and the value to increase. And the vacant site levy is going to be introduced in 2018. This will be 3% of the, the, the market value of the site will, will then be levied against the owner in, in terms of trying to bring them forward and trying to get the pieces of land used. Um, there's a reduction in uh, planning contributions in terms of almost one third. Again, these are incentives to try and bring development forward and to try and get things going. Modification of duration of permission. This could be a use it or lose it type scenario where if, if planning permission has been granted, it can be taken away, the time frame can be reduced. And again, these are all incentives to try and bring forward development. So see, these are some of the, the, the planning development number two, some of the, the, the key things. We're going to have a planning regulator, which was coming from the, Mahan, the recommendation of the Mahan Tribunal. Key principles will be plan-led and evidence-based. Proactively drive and support sustainable development, creating communities and further developing existing communities in a sustainable manner. There has to be support for the transition to a low carbon future, and this will ensure that development facilitates and encourages greater use of public transport. The Urban Regenera Regeneration and Housing Bill came into uh, power this year. And the purpose was to address the housing supply issues and to stimulate construction, particularly in the Dublin area. Now, the revision of Part 5 social and affordable housing, it's, it's, as I said, it's only for social and uh, social housing. It's 10% only, which means nine, uh, any developments of nine units or less will not be uh, subject to this. There used to be a, a, a situation where developers could pay a cash uh, alternative instead of supplying these houses. That has now been taken away, so that the, that the, the focus is on trying to bring forward some social housing. Again, we were talking about one-third uh, reduction in development levies. This has always been something that developers would have argued against and said that the costs were too high in terms of you know, trying to bring housing to, um, to the market. We seem to be so much dearer than Northern Ireland and the UK in terms of our construction costs, and this is one way of addressing it. Our vacant sites levy. You know, we've all seen sites like this in and around our city centre. Um, Paul Kearns, an executive planner with Dublin City Council, would class this as antisocial behaviour. You know, for people who have to walk by something like this on a daily basis, this is antisocial behaviour. We should not have this in dense urban uh, areas. Coming along to development standards and sustainability. 
there needs to be an, a, a push towards de developing in and around transport nodes, our, our Lewis, our train lines, our bus stations. One of the barriers, perhaps, to, to uh, development is the fact that there is a low density output per hectare, and always has been in Ireland, particularly around strategic land, land banks. You know, when, when we look at the planning regulations at the moment, it perhaps is a barrier towards development because of the open space requirements, sustainable urban drainage, and car parking requirements. So, you know, potentially, you know, 20, 25% of, of, of land is being used uh, to, to supply these. And this is regardless of, of the amount of public open land and, and amenity that may surround the, uh, the development. So the conclusions, are the new planning bills going to be enough to ensure supply is greater to demand or even if supply will equal demand? The one shoe fits all development standards for, re for residential uh, properties, is it appropriate? Are, are there needs to change? Our height and our density issues need to be looked at in terms of, you know, in European countries, we're able to build uh, higher densities and get more units per hectare than we are in, in Ireland at the moment. The time frame of a planning application needs to be looked at in terms of speeding it up and trying to bring development forward as quickly as possible. And there needs to be more resources put into the planning system in terms of, of extra staff, in terms of dealing with those things. So I'll leave you with a, a thank you, and a, a just in, in terms of uh, planning and development, at Downey Planning, we'd be very, very happy to discuss any of your, your plans and your proposals. Thank you very much for listening.